Father, thank you that your word is prophetic. Long before the systems of this world existed, your word was there. Thank you, God, that your word is everlasting. That long after the systems of this world have failed, your word will still remain. God, thank you that your word is tutorial, God, and that we can learn so much about ourselves and the direction we're going in and how to get out of them when we need to. So may the power of your word free us, help us to see, and help us to be in awe of everything that you're doing and everything that you've done. We thank you asking these things in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if you guys remember, we've been going through 1 Samuel. We noticed, we saw that the Israelites had begun to have these crazy things happen with the Ark. You guys remember the Ark of the Covenant and the, the, the tumors and all that other stuff happened. You guys that you've been here. and We're coming to a time where Israel is becoming uh, a nation. It's forging itself into, they're becoming a, a people group, the nation of Israel. And as you become a people group, as you become a, a living and moving, and you wonder who you're supposed to be. And you wonder how you're going to get there. Who am I supposed to be? How am I going to get there? Young people always are worried about that. And I think so much of the simulation of their life becomes upon what's surrounding them. And the trick, and I do say trick, to living the life of a Christian is to following what you can't see, believing you're being led to the direction that you don't yet understand. It's impossible to fathom, difficult to accomplish, and yet so enumerated in Scripture. Here we're going to see something, and the application is, is crystal clear, and the history is probably the saddest thing that could ever happen, and the lessons learned and not learned in this chapter are so incredible. To think that what we're about to read was written just about 1,050 years before Christ our Savior was born. Now it came to pass, verse 1, chapter 8, 1 Samuel, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel, the name of his second, Abijah. They were judges in Beersheba, but his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted justice. Please give me your attention. Samuel, we saw him at the beginning of this book as a young man. Hannah giving him to the Lord to serve God all his life. And we talked about this. Some of the Bible studies we looked at were, you know, how does, a, how does a great man of God produce such horrible kids as Eli's sons did? And we, we talked about punishing our kids and spanking. We, we did Bible studies about how to, how to know you're sure. And I don't want to go over the same thing again, but here is the sad truth of the matter is, Samuel, same situation. Even though he had such a, good mom and dad, even though he had served God his whole life, his sons, for whatever reason that we don't understand fully, they're not enumerated in Scripture, he made Joel and Abijah judges, and they were horrible judges. His kids went bad quick. And isn't it seem like that in our lives sometimes, application? God's fallen asleep. He did such good things in my life when I first got saved, when I first started going to church. But now, I don't know, man. I think he's kind of left me alone. I remember myself after about two years after I got out, uh, got out of prison, I was walking with the Lord for maybe three years. I couldn't hear his voice anymore. I just, I read the Bible and it was just like, I wasn't, I, it was just pages, just black dots. And I remember praying and, and thinking, man, it, it just literally felt like, my prayers were hitting the ceiling like they weren't going anywhere, wondering where God was and what he was up to and what did I do wrong? I did something wrong. I must have, must have unconfessed sin in my life or something. God had left me. God was 
drawing me out and saying, are you going to have faith? The faith factor has to come in at some point in time. Like a little child. I mean, how many meals have you gotten, Joshua? How many meals? Can you count? Of course you can. You can answer me. How many meals have you got? How many meals has Yaya and Poppy cooked you, given you, gotten you, bought you? Lots of them, right? You, you remember? You have it counted, do you? How many? You know, I'm not surprised that you said that even one bit. <laughs> yeah, look at him. He's ducking down back there. You know what the thing is? And you want to know what that speaks of? The faithfulness of his parents. The faithfulness of his parents. And yet, I guarantee you it won't be a day or two. He's going to ask, are you making dinner? Is breakfast ready? I, I, you ever asked mom that? Never, huh? You're in church. <laughs> we do that to God, don't we? We have big things, though. I mean, they're big to us. You know, my rent's due and I'm $300 short. Or What's God doing? Where is he at? Verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at, Ram at Ramah. And said to him, look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. You know what I got to do? I got to do like my buddy is doing. I got to do like, why, why don't we have a relationship like that person? Why doesn't it go down like that person? Why can't you be more like that person? The first thing we do is survey what's around us and think they've got it so good. Quick story, and it's a good testimony, and, and I, again, I, I feel spirit-led to say this. My kids, because they had never been in They've never been adults. They were still kids still. They used to look at other people's relationships and wish that, my, that their parents, me and my wife, were like them. Me and my wife, very opposite. We have a volatile but loving, beautiful relationship. We argue. It's, it gets, sometimes we, we fight, you know what I mean? She hits me every once in a while, just twice a week tops. I'm teasing, but we have a relationship. And because we love each other and we care about each other, we, we have these, these arguments. And my, my kids just, they want to, why, why can't you have a relationship like so-and-so? Why can't you guys have a, does, some women even will do this. They'll look at another guy and, why can't you be more like, you know what's the greatest thing about being me and being your pastor is you, most of you women don't do that. I love that. <laughs> why can't you be more like Lee? And you know what happened? They started spending time at these other families' houses. And you know what they found out? I'm really glad that you don't have a relationship like them. And this will happen. Especially if you guys have young kids, this is going to happen. This is normal. Ladies, this is going to happen. You look at somebody from the outside and you think, man, they, he's... They got it so good. They, they, everything, and this is what the Israelites were doing. They were looking at the other nations. They have a king. Has anybody, is anybody here one of those people that looks and they, they admire all the, the, the monarchies of, of England and, and all Europe and the kings? Anybody follow that stuff like Queen Diana or Princess Diana? Or, good. I don't like them. But some people do. I mean, they're huge here. I mean, every magazine that they're on sells and Prince Albert did this and Prince... Guinevere or whatever did that. And Stop, come on. I don't know. I'm trying to keep it together here. Make us a king like the other nations. We want to have a king. Look how great kings are. But this thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. You guys hear that? He was so upset. He's like, why are you complaining? You have so much. 
God is, look, look what he did. He led you out of Egypt. He fed you with manna for 40 years. He, he crossed the Jordan with you. The walls of Jericho, look at, he put water. For, what does it matter? Don't forget what God has done in your life. In the book of Revelation, he says, return to your first love. Don't forget. I remember, again, being in that wilderness and wondering, am I ever going to hear God's voice again? And asking a friend of mine, Owen, he was a pastor, I don't hear God anymore. I don't hear him anymore. I don't sense, I don't feel his presence. When I'm reading the word, it's like, it's just a book. And he said, it's the wilderness. It's the desert. It's a great place to be. I said, don't feel like a great place to be. He goes, well, that's your first problem. You're feeling. If God doesn't show up and give you some warm, tingly feeling when you're reading the Bible, does that mean he's not real? Do you forget what he's done? Does God owe you? I struggle with that, guys. I did. I was like, man, it's just, I guess he doesn't owe me, but I miss him. And I forgot a lot. And we always think, if, if I lived in the days of, of the apostles and I saw all the miracles of God, I would never, ever forget about it. Really. <laughs> We forget what God does in our life the day before yesterday. You didn't have the rent money and a check came in out of nowhere. You didn't expect. The job popped up. You did something. Somehow it worked. And the very next month, we're doubting all over again. Oh, that wasn't God, though. That was some work I did. And it's like, the Israelites... He says, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. There's a word for pastors also. I come up here and I preach God's word every week and I pour out my whole life before you guys. I mean, it's not. You know, some guy, somebody came up to me at the, at the cookout. We did a cookout. You know, if you guys weren't there, you missed a really fun time. And he says, man, you know, uh, you said that your religion is jujitsu. So I don't want to say this, but... As soon as those words left his mouth, I go, well, that I won't be saying again. He totally missed the point. So much I leave out there, and it's like, ugh, I wish I wouldn't have said that, and I wish I wouldn't have said this. And you pour your life into people, and they leave you, and you just want to help people. It's like, I'm not trying to take advantage of you. I want nothing from you. I just want you to make it. Every once in a while, the Lord knocks on your heart, and he gives you this word. He goes, it's not rejecting you, Ryan. They're rejecting me. I'm telling you, you've got to faith this thing through, guys. And I just sense by the power of the Holy Spirit that some of you guys are being hit right, right square in the chest today. You don't need a king. You don't need a man. You don't need a woman. You don't need kids. You don't... You just need God. Remember what he's done. Hold on to him. You guys that have kids here, you'll relate to this. You give your kid a great present. First birthday, we have a tradition in our house. We, we get a cake. We get like a $5 Publix cake. And we put it right on their, on their um, what do you call that thing? High chair. high chair, thank you. Put on a high chair and happy birthday. Hold their hands back, happy birthday. We sing the happy birthday and there we go, go! And we film it. It's just a tradition in the Gitman house. And by the fourth or fifth birthday, the craziest thing happens. I don't want that, I want this. I didn't want that, I wanted this. I didn't want that, I wanted this. And I look at it every time when the kids do that, and I go, that's me with God. That's me with God. I didn't want that. I wanted this. I didn't want that. I wanted this. I wanted this. I wanted that. I do that to God. And I, and I'm so thankful that he's not like me. He's not a father who gets mad. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll take everything from you. You know what God does? Ready? Tune back in with me. 
God has what's called a permissive will. And what he does here to the Israelites is what's called a permissive will. When you ask God enough for something, he goes, okay, you can have it. There's plan A, and then everything else is permissive will. Plan A and permissive will. Watch what happens. Where did I leave off? Eight, thank you. Now, therefore, verse 9. No, verse 8. Yes, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Verse 8. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me, served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Now therefore heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. It's great. Totally political. We as a country were founded as what's called a republic, not a democracy. The will of the people didn't matter as long as the people that we were putting in place followed specifically what we had asked them to not just appoint, but to enforce. So forth, meaning. We were supposed to be voting for the people that were putting our Declaration of Independence, our Bill of Rights, what else? Amendments. They were supposed to be fulfilling those. But in, I want to say, 1780, 85, just around the early 1800s, the king of France said that America will not survive. And they were asked why. He says, because if you give the people what they want, eventually what they'll want is a leader that will give them more of what they want. Do you follow what I'm saying? The reason we used to, as a tradition, have our leaders, our president, put his hand on the Bible and swear to uphold the office is because he was supposed to be enforcing what's in that book. Whether the people liked it or not whether they wanted it or not. I am the man that you've appointed me to be. However, because we started paying them way too much, the business world started saying, wow, you can make a lot of money in this politics thing. And the people that are now being elected are people that want the money and the power that is involved with that. They're not enforcing, uh, upholding our Constitution or our word or the word of God. No, what they're doing is they're saying, whatever you want, that's what I'll give you. You just put me in power. You give me the power, and I'll give you whatever you want. Thus, the prophecy of this king of France coming into play. He was right. So now we don't vote for who is going to uphold the U.S. Constitution, who is going to enforce the scriptures as best he can, applying them to his leadership. Who will give us more stuff? More stuff. That's who we put in office. And... Ipso facto, what happened is exactly what's going to happen in Israel. Look, verse 10. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of a king who will reign over you. Listen, guys. Listen. This is the king. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some, of, some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest. And some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. He will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants. He will take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men and your donkeys, and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep, and you will be his servants. And you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Do you understand what he's saying there? 
You want a king to reign over you? It's not good enough that you are what's called, ready, a theocracy. They wanted a monarchy. We want a king. Why do you want a king? Well, look at how cool that nation is. You're looking at the outside. This is the exact application I was talking about. You look at the outside of some people's family. You look at the outside of some people's lives. Man, I wish I had their life. Do you really? Before you've known what's going on, oh, I wish I was his son. Some of you young guys say, I wish that guy was my father. Be careful. I wish I was in that family. Why? Well, look how, look at a car he drives. And that's what was happening. And he says, you know what? They're not rejecting you, Samuel. They're rejecting me. And here's what I want you to tell them. When they appoint a king, the king is going to take, 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 take. And the larger his kingdom gets, the more he's going to take and the more taxes he's going to need. For the bigger the government, the more it costs, the more the go- that the government will take from you. Sound familiar? It's going on right now. More and more and more and more. It's not enough. Now, I don't have a particular position on it that I'm going to share with you, but I will tell you this. The more we demonize people who have money, the worse it's going to get. And that's where we're at in this country. If you own your own business and you make a lot of money, you're a bad guy now. If you don't have health care, you deserve health care. Who's going to pay for it? I think it's great. I think they should have health care for everybody. It should be a way that any sick person could get health care. But who's going to pay for it? Well, let the government pay for it. Where the heck do you think the government gets their money from? From you. They take your money to take care of themselves, and now all of the people who have no money also need it. Eventually, it's going to run out. Does anybody know what our debt is right now? Seventeen trillion dollars. That's trillion with a T. That's an unfathomable amount, just so you know. It's unfathomable. You don't understand what trillion is. I don't understand what it is. Believe me, I'm not condescending when I say that. I have no clue. I remember saying growing up, going, man, a million dollars, that would be great, I have a million dollars. Let me tell you something. A billion? No. A trillion. 17 trillion. And just so you know, that's not money that we're not going to eventually have to pay back. Somebody's going to have to pay it. Somebody is going to have to. When you run a deficit, every single... Put it to you this way. If I ran my business the way this government's running their business, I'd be in jail right now. That's not a joke. That's not a hypothetical. That's the truth. He says, you want a king? Application? You want a king? Let me tell you what. God had a king for Israel. He just wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready yet. God has a king for you. He's not come back the second time yet. Came the first time, they put him on a cross. The second time he comes back, he's going to be a ruling, powerful king. Wait for your king. Wait for your king. Don't appoint some man as your king, ladies. Gentlemen, don't appoint some career or some job or some sport or some education as your king. Be careful. Look what happened to the Israelites. I tell you, if you appoint a king, what kind of king are you going to appoint? I want to appoint a king who loves me. I want to appoint a king who cares about me. I want to appoint a king who has my best interest in mind. I want to appoint a king who's all powerful, that no other king can come in. I want to, put, I want to appoint a king in my life who I can give my heart and my mind to. If you've never, listen to me, this is a little hypothetical for you, but this is a really good analogy. If you've ever loved somebody only to find that they loved somebody else, it's a miserable, it's a horrible thing. I've seen this phenomenon going with women. They fall in love with a guy who's not in love with them, and they follow them from place to place to place to place to place. And they never can love anybody else because 
goodness, they just love this guy and he's terrible. What a horrible thing, what a, a horrible phenomenon this is. I've seen it happen with men too. They fall in love with women, they just, look, I don't love you, okay, stop. And they just can't let it go. And they carry a torch, they even get married, but they still love this. Jesus don't do that to us. You love him, he don't ever love anybody else as much as he loves you. It's the craziest thing. This is ready. This is, goes back to one of those unfathomables, like the whole trillion thing. Do you know this morning I spent about an hour in prayer with the Lord, and it was so real. It was so beautiful. I had such a great time with my king this morning. And some of you guys that prayed this morning, you had the same experience. And that's a little weird to me. It's like, well, I was with him this morning. No, you weren't. I was. The word spoke to me this morning, I'm telling you. The spirit moved on my heart this morning. And it was great. We had this one-on-one -on -one time, just me and my bud, me and my best friend. He's like my big brother. He's like my daddy. And you could have spent the same time. And this is the only thing this ever happens with. Never, ever, ever, ladies, will you give your love to the Lord and it will not be returned. Never. Never. Like, never. I mean, never. Never. That's awesome. That is awesome. Verse 19. Read 18 again because it's so sad. And you will cry out to the Lord and you will cry out in that day because of, the, of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves and the Lord will not hear you in that day. It just reminded me of something. I watch uh, Bill O'Reilly and you know he said? He said, America's got nobody to blame but themselves. We appointed these men. The House, the Senate, all branches of government. We appointed them. We put them in office. We bought their line. We put them there. We got nobody to blame for our, but ourselves for this now. You know, when I was growing up, this is, this is a crazy thing, this is a little side note. The president's office, the office of the president, it was like something everybody admired. I mean, growing up, Reagan even, and even um, Ford, I mean, all right, these guys weren't the greatest men, but the office was still revered. Now just the sound of the president, it, the office itself is so shamed, it's been so defiled over the last 15, 20 years. I watched a movie and they talked about the president. The president walked in and it was like, booze. You know what I'm talking about? It's like ruined now. You know why? Because the king don't care about you. He just cares about his, his power getting elected again, will say anything. Anyway. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. <laughs> Remember, I told you the word is prophetic. This is what's going to happen. And this is exactly what's happened. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, no, but we will have a king over us. A king, man, a king. We want a king, like King George, man. We want a king. I want a king. I just want a boyfriend. I just want a boyfriend. Why? Well, look at so-and-so. They have a boyfriend. Look how happy they are. Who told you they're so happy? Look at them. They hold hands and they have somebody to talk to. I want a boyfriend. I want a boyfriend. God's going to give you your, he's going to give you up to your will. He's going to give it to you. And you know what he's going to do? It is a crazy thing. He's going, to, he's going to give you what you ask for, even if it's bad for you. He's going to let it wreck your life, and he's going to walk with you the whole time through it. He's going to go, come on. If you want to do it, we'll do it together. You're going to go through my muck with me, 
Yep, right down in the sewer, right down in the pit of junk. You're going to come here with me? Yep. Why? Because I love you. Well, then why did you let me have a boyfriend? Why did I let you have a boyfriend? You asked for a king. I gave you a king. I try to tell you a king won't be no good for you. For you ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I want you to, as homework, I want you to go find the word boyfriend and girlfriend in the Bible. I want you to find it. I want you to bring it and show it to me next week. It doesn't exist. Therefore, you don't exist. If you happen to be a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I want a boyfriend. No, I don't want a boyfriend. I got a girlfriend. My wife's my girlfriend. Why? Well, that we may also may be like all the other nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Yes, somebody to protect me I need. And Samuel heard all the words of the people. He repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. So the Lord said to Samuel, Heed their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said to the men of Israel, Go home, I'm sick of hearing you. Oh, no, he said, Every man go to his city. That's what he said. Go. Go. Go to your city. I'll get you a king. The next few chapters, we're going to see who's chosen king and what happens to him as God prepares them for a really rough time. All things, though, working together for good. You can close your word. Guys, I know that this is a really difficult thing to hear because you can't see God and even when you feel Him, you're not supposed to feel Him and as we walk by faith and not by sight and eh, listen, I know, there ain't nothing easy about this thing but it is the most rewarding after 20 years more than 20 years now of walking with the Lord I can honestly say to you it's been the most difficult thing I've ever done but it is also the most rewarding. When I thought I needed money, 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 when I thought I needed women, 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 when I thought I needed power, 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 when I thought I needed all those things, none of them satisfied out of the things that I did achieve, which wasn't a lot of them. Walking with the Lord, I've not just found, the Lord put it this way, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all those other things I'll give to you. But those other things will always take you away from the one thing that's most important if you seek them first. Seek God, He'll give you everything you want. You want a boyfriend? Love Jesus with everything you got. He'll bring you the best boyfriend you can imagine. And I don't mean him. I mean, He'll bring you a boyfriend. I was talking to a young man just a couple of months ago. And I asked him how much he dug this chick. You really like her? Yeah, I really like her. I said, then why don't you just love Jesus with everything you got, and he'll give it to you. And I could tell, just talking to him, man, what if he doesn't? Then he'll bring you a better one. But I really, listen to me. This is your Father in heaven. Don't you understand? He knows what you need. He knows what you want. He knows better than you. He knows what's in your heart. You say, oh, no, I want a blonde guy with big blue eyes and a big wide jaw, and I want him to be like six foot four. And he brings you some shrimpy, bald guy with nostril hairs. <laughs> oh, no, he's not the one I wanted. And then all of a sudden you, oh, he's, he's not so bad. And then all of a sudden you get married, and the big, tall, Blonde guy loses his hair and ear, hair starts coming out of his ears and he gets nasty and and your and your and your little bald guy don't change and you're like man I am so glad God didn't give me what I was asking for I'm so glad I was asking for something that I didn't even know in the end you understand give me a king give me a king. He's right there. He's right there. Love him with everything, man. Hold on to this thing like it's everything to you. Read it. Learn it. Live it. 
and he will give you every desire, everything. Un but as soon as you think that the way to Christ is through stuff, he'll go, okay, I'll walk through it with you. Secondary plan, permissive will. And you'll get to the end of that path and you'll, go this, you'll say the same thing that I've been saying my whole life. Why didn't I just listen the first time God said no? All right, I beat, I beat that down enough. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you so much for your word, the power of your word, the, the wonder of your word. Thank you so much, God. And God, I do pray because I, I so sensed in my spirit there were so many hearts that were hurting tonight. God, I do pray for patience and peace. I pray for justice and mercy. I pray that your word, uh, the message of your word, would go forth into the hearts of those that are in dire need of you, God. And they would wait for the true king, the, the, the coming king who will never disappoint, who will never let us down. Thank you, God, for being more than our savior and friend, but our, our, our true king. We love you, God. Forgive us for our impatience, Forgive us for our, for our rushing. We wait upon you.